Welcome back to Carpathian Countryside for episode 31 with me, Mr. Sealy P. It's October 2, and as you've seen, I did um, do that sugar beet harvest that popped up. I did that actually quite late into the night. Um, and then, what did I do? Is there a cultivating one? I did, and this, uh, that sunflower one, field 25. I did the sunflower harvest on field 25. Now, that left me with a little bit of sunflower, and that was up at the old, the old mill. So rather than, it wasn't a huge amount for the contract. I think the total off the field was 55,000 litres, 56. I think I was left with 4,000 litres. So I just put it all into the old grain mill up on the hill. So on here, we have got a pallet of sunflower oil. And we've got all the flour from up there as well, because that was all sitting there and the sunflower oil wouldn't come out. You can see the sunflower oil there. Um, that wouldn't come out because I was blocking it all with flour. So I thought, you know what, let's get all the flour out there. Um, it's still worth less than the, the, the wheat. So again, it would have been a constituent part of something else, but I'm not using it for anything else at the moment. So I've got bestie belts, we've got grape juice. I've got some raisins. I did set the raisins running once I got a couple of pallets, two, three pallets, I think. Um, I turned the raisins off and then just carried on with the grape must and, and just the normal grape juice production. So we've got some grape seed, grape juice, raisins, bestie belts. No bestie shoes, I've missed my turning, that's why I'll come in the other way. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop as we come in here. You know, at the end of the last episode, I said about doing a test to see whether or not those olive trees are supposed to yield the way they did. I went onto Western Wilds, my, my test mod map, and did a test. And um, I'm going to show you the result now. They are supposed to be like that. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, yeah, that, that was, did everything right, everything as it should be. Nice straight rows, didn't have any grass around it. Um, fertilised mulch, did all the stuff that needs to be done and that's what it was yielding. So yeah, that looks like that's what those olive trees yield. You'd need to do a lot of them to make any money. I mean, really. I mean, you think about it logically. If you had olive groves and every year you made, what did I get off it? 1,000, was it 1,200 and something litres? If I had 1,200 litres of olive oil to sell as a little, you know, farm operation, that's a lot of litres. You put that into small olive oil bowls, you've got a lot of olive oil. But within the economy of the game and how the game works, it's not enough to make it viable. So it's, it's that kind of, do you take the game economics and the game... Um, what's the word I'm looking for, sort of calendar and run it like that but if you apply real world things to it to make it ultra realistic the two don't mix very well it's that weird thing of people say oh yeah but every, the prices are overinflated what you get is overinflated yeah because the economy's over because the way it's set up is done in a different way to real life so you've got that weird, weird kind of mix up it doesn't always work um, I have taken on a ploughing job, which I haven't had before, and I've leased a plough to do that. What's the we've got? Well, none of this stuff is accepted here. Grape juice, olive oil, oh, sorry, sunflower oil. Oh! Hi, day! But, today, as I keep saying and have said for quite some time, pigs, and I think I might do cows. I might get myself a feed mixer. Um, we've got all this. We've got all the bales to do total mix ration. I'm thinking of setting up a feed, a feed company. Um, pigs, you know, pigs and cows doesn't work, does it? Oinks. Oink, and, oink and moo, oink and oink and moo. So, now, would I have that as Oink and Moo Fee Company? Or Oinken? Oink and Moo. So it looks like it's one word. I might do that. Oink and Moo Feed Company. So yeah, I've got a plough over there, 9 metre. 
the 6M9M, whichever it is. Um, and we're going to try out that mixer that's built in into the facility, but I'm also going to get myself a, a feed mix of a cow. So what we're going to be looking at is pigs and cows today. So we'll have sheep, pigs and cows, get some feed mix going. But what I want to do is um, I'm going to put one trailer load, 11,000 litres, of each of the products I need for making the pig food into the pig food mixer inside. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. I'm, I'm going to sort out the pig situation first because I'd rather get the... Um, actually what I'll do is do that and that. Put that back over here. Um, I want to get the stuff in so the pig food mixer can be mixing while we sort out other things. And I'd rather get some pig food mixed before we get the pigs in. I don't want to put the pigs in and not have anything to feed them. I don't know how many pigs we're going to get. We'll get a few. I might only get 10, maybe 15 or something like that. And cows, I'm not so sure. I want to get some milk. I mean, like I say, this is not ongoing. You know, I'm, I'm at a point where I'm almost... I'm almost at an end here. Because it's, you know, I wanted to do pigs. I wanted to use the pig food mixer. I wanted to get the grapes done. I wanted to use the olive shaker. Um... There's been a few things on here that have been a kind of goal. I wanted to get my corn harvest done and get some corn in, so I needed that constituent part for making pig food. There's been a few things that I wanted to do, and we are almost there. Cows wasn't going to be on the agenda, but I thought all that time I spent doing bales and keeping bales back in case I wanted to, it would be a waste of all those bales sat there if I don't do anything with them. So, yeah, we'll do some time expression and um, so we get Cows are over there, pigs are over here. And I think a great must already. That's chugging away very nicely. So what we'll do, we'll drop those there. That's my grape juice and everything else, as you've already seen, so they stay there for loading up. So actually you know what I need to do? I, I don't even know, I can't remember what the recipes are. I can go in that way or this way. Uh, there's a doorway, where is it? Here. There's a light somewhere. Nope. Why is that light switch not working? Is it over here? Oh, there we go. Lights! So this, I think, is for the main silo. So if you look on the bottom right, you've got all my corn, barley, wheat, canola, oat, but then the top one says storage is empty. So I think that's for the pig food mixer, which I think is this one here. So I don't know whether I can tip or whether I'm going to need something to put in up here. Is that door open? No. And then I'm assuming... Like I said, I haven't used this, I haven't tried it. So we've got our main silo. Oh, what are these? The storage bays? Um, so our main silo here is in and out, I think. So this one has got to be where the pig food comes out, hasn't it? I don't know. Let's get that door open. Right. So where are we? There we go. So we've got Corn, barley, canola and sugar beet, all of which I've got. Sorghum, wheat, sunflower and potato. Actually, I've got all of that as well. So is it worth me putting in one load of everything and running them both? I'm sure I've got all of that. Yeah, I've got some sorghum. Right, so let's do that. Uh, the first test is going to be then, if I go and fill up a tray load of each of these, what I'll do is I'll put potato and sugar beet, because we're going to be over there. I was going to go and get sugar beet, but if I do both recipes, I'll do them both. Probably should have stuck with the fence, because this is a little bit slower, this one, but... We will use it. Oink and move, that's it. Oink and move. 
feed company. I have officially lost the plot now. So I've got to make sure I don't get the wrong thing like potatoes. Switch to that one, and I want to be. Yeah, should be cool. Can't remember what tip side I've got these on. They're normally tip side left. Tip side right. Oh, when did I change those? Did I change them for this? I might have changed them for this. Haven't I? So we're into our dilemma phase because um, doing Bally Spring with Mississippi P. And if I finish on here, where do I go? <laughs> Potentially Court Farms is coming at some point. Uh, I know everyone is uncles on Court Farms, but I really, really want to play on it. Um, there's also all the stuff that's going on at the moment with Lancy Boy. I'm not getting into the politics, I'm not getting into the debate, I'm not getting into the, anything about what's happening, what's gone on, or anything like that. But as far as I can tell, Lancy Boy has said that um, American Fools is going to come to console. Oh, that's alright, so we can tip. there though. Right, so that one at the top, if you see there, that was saying, um, I wonder if I can turn that on, or whether I need to specifically tip into this one. So only just 5,000 litres of each, okay. That's a little bit of a nuisance, but it's not, not the end of the world. By the wall. So that's where they go in. So what I need to do is check over here now, and this will tell me. I might have to go into the menu normally, but. Right, sugar and potatoes. Right, yeah. So, because it's not showing in there. You can't transfer over from your main silo, so that where it's stored in the main silo, you'd think you'd be able to just see it all in there, but obviously it's not. So I'm, I'm going to have to transfer it from the main silo into there, which I can do. So what I'm going to do now is uh, take that back, do another few runs backwards and forwards, and let's see if we can't get some uh, pig food being produced. It's taking me a while to get here, but... We have got here. Everything's in. I was a little bit short of sorghum. I only had 14,114 litres. If we go into the doorway, oh, the lights are all off again. Walk on, there we go. Right. So, corner filled up barley, canola, sugar beet, sorghum. Yeah, I was a little bit short on sorghum, but that's not too bad. So, what we can do, we can get both of those going. Both at 3,000 cycles per month, both at a recipe, and we're already up three. And continuing for pig food production seven, that should be fairly rapid, I guess. I say fairly rapid. And what I've done, as you saw, I've got out of the, uh, I've parked up here. I'm sure this is where we, where we take it out from. Anyway, so pig food on the way. Uh, next up is going to be... Actually, I don't think I've got enough horsepower on this. Potentially. We're going to go to the store. I've got a plough to pick up, which actually I can fold and put on the front. And we're going to get a feed mix. So I think I'm going to buy it. I could just lease it. I was thinking of a stationary one, but I used a stationary one on um, Edgewater. So I thought, you know what, we'll get a, we'll get a mobile. Um, that Sadie is a, is a cleaning piece of equipment works brilliantly as a self-propelled forage wagon unfortunately it doesn't have the ability to um, 
make mixed ration, which I thought it did. It was one of the reasons why I kind of, it's my own fault I didn't read all the things, but it's, it's just for cleaning up, but it's perfect for doing like, if you're grabbing silage and stuff like that, from a silage clamp and that kind of thing, it's brilliant. With extended capacities and all that kind of stuff, I'm more than happy that I bought it. It's just, I, yeah, I, I thought it would do with it, but that's not a problem. So, mixer wagon. Um, I'm going to do as well, I don't always do this. I know people get, um, people used to get kind of cross about it. I don't I think I do so much anymore. Um, I say people, some people, you know. Um, when you're putting silage bales into a feed mixer, a mixer wagon or whatever you should put them into, um, because you can now cut the wrap off, and it's not something I've done in all honesty, I, I, you know, I just kind of pick the bales up, sling them in, and using bale spikes and things like that for, for um, picking up silage bales, and people always said, oh, but you're putting holes in them and you wouldn't do that. And I've said before, they do in real life. They, sometimes they use silage bales and they just have um, bale tape, um, silage tape, and it just tapes over the holes. So you can seal the holes back up again, it's not a problem. But because we can actually take the wrap off, I should really do it properly. Um, what I'm hoping for, wow, that was a lot wider than I thought it was going to be. I mean, I know it's a nine meter and I've used nine meter ones before, but that seems absolutely huge. So that's for the ploughing contract I've got. I think the ploughing contract pays 18 grand, but that'll be one I'll, I'll finish off with, I think. So, to the store, bad man. Now, I've got a couple of options I'm looking at here. I'm not going self-propelled, but if we go down to our animals, animal lector, uh, just here. We've got all these different ones, but I haven't used an Anderson for a while. That's 60 grand for 28,800. Let's, let's have a look at the ones we've got here. 24,000 for 50 grand. And then we're doubling up here. This one, I think I used an FS19 on six ashes maybe. 45,000 litres, but it's 141 grand. So when you think it's not, it's not double, it's not double that. I could get two Andersons and do nearly 60,000 litres for the cost of that, 40, uh, 45,000. So it's a bit of a dilemma now. I think for the price, I might just go, I mean, that I can just do loads and loads and loads and loads. And people will be also asking the question, and rightly so, 180 horsepower. Uh, I think I've got that. I uh, don't want to know. License plate. Let's buy it. I made that on the last sale of all my goods, so we're good. The um, the hayloft building I've got, I can make total mix ration in that hayloft building. Because it does all sorts of productions and all sorts of stuff. Why wouldn't I just do that? Because I did say when I placed it, I placed it because it's in fairly inexpensive, it's got a good capacity, and I wanted a hayloft. I know it works and it works well, and I said I would use it as a hayloft. Now obviously a hayloft will only take hay and straw, generally speaking. Because it does multiple products and productions, that one will do, um, I've stored grass in it. So, you know, I, I could, if I wanted to now, grab a load of bales, out of my bale storage, sling them into that and just set it off producing top mix ration. I could do. But I wanted to do it I'd say properly, yeah I guess. I mean I would imagine somewhere out there there are I mean because there are static machines like the one I'm pulling here. This is the trailed, there are self-propelled and there are static ones. There are probably big mix of silos out there. Um, I've never actually researched it where you put in all the constituent parts and it will chug away and it will mix up loads of whatever it is you put in there. I guess that would make sense. But I wanted to use a, um, a, a trailed one, so that's what we'll go with. Now, the other problem we've got, something I've said right, another reason why I generally go for either loose material, so I'll use a trailed mixer or a self-propelled under a, a silo using loose material because you can pretty much put in 
almost exactly what you need. Since FS22 came out, with all the various different bale sizes, bale shapes, bale capacities, whereas back in the day, when our old lad, um, when bales were 4,000 litres, that was it. All, all bales were 4,000 litres, so you know you knew where you stood. You could work out your figures and it would be like, okay, well I need two of these, one of those. Because you've now got bales of all different sizes, shapes, capacities, round bales, square, you know, it's a lot harder to do an exact mix in one of these when you've got all different bale sizes. So that potentially causes an issue. Um, I hope not. <laughs> I hope not, but we will see. So in between recording the last bit and this bit, um, I have, it has changed, you've probably already seen from the thumbnail now. Um, Boink and Move Feed Company, that's what we went with. I'm going to use the um, little telehandler, that thing. I know I said in the last episode I was thinking of upgrading it because it's a little bit slow, but that thing's been worth its weight in gold. It's just absolutely fantastic. So what we'll do, we'll put that there for the time being. I'll leave the, um, the doodaddery on. Actually, what I need to do is let's do that. That way we can see our mixing ratio. I'm not too bothered about mineral feed in it. I could do or should do. So what I'll do, did I get this wrong last time? Is it here? It should come up top left. Oh, there we go, open storage. So, square bale hay, one. Square bale silage, we'll go with one. They're both seven fives, but the straw, that's what, that's what I was saying, the straw is 9,000. So the straw, which would be a smaller constituent part, now is a bigger constituent part. I don't have any smaller straw bales. I'm gonna have to. Oh no, you idiot! <laughs> I meant to put it on one. What did I do? Oh, it doesn't matter. I'll put them all back in later on. I'll just shove them. I'll just shove them all in. It'll be. <laughs> oh, uh, oh my days. Because I was trying to work out the amounts. One, one, and one. Now again, I don't have to use straw in the mix. I could just do silage and, and uh, actually I could do. No. I'm going to need some hay bales out anyway for um, bedding. But there we go. So I've cut open my silage bale. So when I throw these into the mixer, no one's got to worry about wrap getting caught up or anything like that. We can cut them open. It's all good. Oh, we got french fries. Was that there a minute ago? We got our first french fries. Yeah, boy. Awesome, right. What we'll do... Let's grab that. Okay, what just... It's going well so far, isn't it? Just pushed it back into the thing, haven't I? Which means, potentially, if I've got enough oomph. I've got to make sure I bring the size bail out straight back, because the trigger's there. If I swing around even slightly, it's going to take it back in, isn't it? So I need to get a little hay out. I'm considering now actually just doing the mix with um, silage and hay. It goes against every fibre of my being to do that because I, I usually just, I prefer to pad out. If you're going to make time mix ration and you've got straw on hand, pad out the mix. You might as well. Um, what is that saying? 
272 litres when that was a 7,500 litre The others I can use for bedding next to the problem. Make sure I turn the right way. Do not want to fluff this up. Let's see why this is not mixing. That's just a... Oh, give me a minute, I'm going to push all these straw bales back in because that's driving up the wall. So it seems to me like that silage bale won't mix and I don't know why. Making any sense? Why is the silage bale not? Without that silage going up into the green, which it should have done by now, which should bring the straw down. Doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I wonder if I can take that silage bale out. Probably not. Because it will just grab the trailer, I think. There we go. Isn't it weird? I wonder if it was just a trigger, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Please. Oh, no. Right, so what I can do now, I've got another hay there. If I sing another hay in, this is what I mean about bale sizes. Trying to get the mix just right is so difficult. Without the correct bale sizes. I guess the other thing I could do, if I sling in, like I say, if I'd have just done silage and hay, bang, sling them in, get your mix, no problem at all. The other thing to do would be to to shred loads of straw bales, put them into the the hay loft, and then what I can do is silage and hay, and if I want to top it up, top it up from the um, hay loft. I'm just thinking, if I throw in, I'm just worried now. If I throw in another hay bale. Is that going to throw the silage into the red? <laughs> Boink and Moo Feed Company, not off to a great start. Well, the pig food seems to be working. So this should take what it needs and then leave the rest of the bale, shouldn't it? Size down too much. Do the same thing with that. Reach in, or have I reached maximum? Have I reached the limit? Have I reached the capacity? close. Yeah, those 9,000 litre straw bales are just too much. Just too much. 
So I've got to do now is unload this. I think I can unload it in this constituent parts. It always allows you to before, is it's just going to unload this forage out, which is a nightmare. Right. I'm going to spend some time shredding some straw bales. I may cut out all of this and go again. Will it allow me to unload this into the silo? I need to just click the plough, I think. The darndest thing just happened. That forage that I unloaded into the hayloft unloaded it all in as hay. Didn't split it, didn't put it in as forage, put it in as hay. But, now you may be aware of this, I wasn't. As I just did that thing earlier, where I went in and tried to lift the bale to get it to feed, because you can, you know, it will take partial bales, I guess, technically. So you can almost pour these. I've always just thrown them in to a feed mix, where I've always just chucked them in, and they just sort of dissolve, they shred, and you've got a full bale in there. It hadn't ever occurred to me, and there'll be people shouting at the screen now, you know, because you can, as that goes in, look bottom right, it will take the bale gradually. I can tailor it. I don't have, I, I can get the mix just right. Now this will take the first bale, and won't start the second one. Because this holds 28,800, if I put both in, like two of each in, it's 15,015, which is 30, which is more than this holds. So potentially I run the risk of the mix not being quite right. So what I did was did, um, what did I do in the other one? I did 14,500. Did I do 14,5? I might have done too much actually. Well, I can see what this mix is doing. So as that goes in, there we go, so it's now taken that bale. We can see it balancing and I can just tailor it. I've never done that before. I'll take the whole one of those. Um, and our capacity now is... Yeah, I mean, I'm a couple of litres short of that being full. And that bale now is sat with 702 litres in it. So that can go to one side and I can use that next time. So I, I can... I've, I've never... It can't just be me. I can't... Maybe it is just me. I've never ever thought of it like that. I know it will take it from other places. You can put them down in, in front of feed triggers and stuff like that. And it will gradually take a bale. Um, but I've never done it in a feed mixer before. How bizarre. Plus all the straw that I, I took off of um, my wheat field, I put into my hayloft, didn't I? Um, that's all in, yeah, that's all sat there loose anyway. So this stuff here, I can gradually shred and replace or whatever I want to do with it. Um, I can use my Sadie, I think. I'm pretty sure if I put a straw in my Sadie, I can do the bedding using the Sadie. Because I'm pretty sure. I'm trying to think now, where was it here? Um, I'm pretty sure this bit here is where the bedding goes in. And there's one in front of the pigs as well, but I've got to find my trigger for feed, which I think is going to be down the middle of here. Quick double check. Yep. So it should allow me to put mix in. And then I'll go and grab the animals. Um, once I've done that, I'll do the cows first. I should have a bit of pig food. As long as it's enough, I've got something to eat. Oh, they go straight in. Boom. So while I'm doing that, I need to look at options for... I don't need a massive animal trailer, but... I guess that one will do... 6 cows, 13 pigs, but it's a couple of trips backwards and forwards. I can go with a much bigger lorry. 2 floor or 3 floor. So we could do 30, 32 cows and 60 pigs in one hit. Maybe we'll do that. Oh, we'll leave it blue. It'll be fine, wouldn't it? I'll use my lorry. Doesn't matter if it's got a license plate. Let's lease that. Some 
szukać więc te I'm gonna go and do another mix so I've got a little bit in me I say, why did I not think of that? I say think of that before. Why did I? Not? I guess because it's always just been. So I'm trying to think. On since FS22 came out, I must have used a trailed feed mixer on on one of the let's plays. I must have done. How bizarre. It wouldn't necessarily work with forks, I guess, would it? Having checked the triggers, it turns out the one at the front um, shows bales. The one on the pigs shows bales out the front, so I'm going to test that first. I've got the Sadie with straw in it, because I thought I'd double check. Right, so you can do bales out the front. The one inside the, uh, the trigger inside the pig barn shows like a, a blower for blowing straw so I don't know whether or not the Sadie will work inside or outside I know it's showing bales okay it's not going to work outside but it might still work inside or it might not work at all I, I don't know um, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't unless this only allows you to blow straw out of a shredder oh no okay we're cool I have no idea how much this is going to take. Probably all of it. Just watching ahead to see where the straw's filling up. Yep, took all 50,000 litres. So I'm going to go and fill up again. I'm not going to come back to here. We've got some bedding here to start off with. I'm going to go and grab another 50,000 and we'll stick it into the pig pen. Um, and then once I've got the animals in, we'll be able to have, actually have a look at what's in each one to work out if anything else needs topping up. So uh, then it'll be over. Grab the animals, let's get them back over. And then uh, while this is going on, keep a trick, uh, keeping on the pig food. And hopefully we'll have enough to get them going, at least. We've got some feeding, we've got some bedding in. Do we start with the oinkin or the moo? Uh, let's go with pigs, they're the closest. But what pigs do we go for? I tend to go for the more... <laughs> this is going to sound ridiculous, isn't it? The, the, the pig type shit, you know. The pig type pigs. You know when you're growing up that that vision of a pig, pink pig or pink with black spots. I tend to shy away from the Berkshires, Berkshires, however you want to say them, but you know what? Oh we can put sixty in here. Hmm, that's a lot. Should we go with let's go with thirty. Actually it's not as expensive as I thought it was gonna be. Uh, you know what? Let's go with 50. We did 50 sheep, didn't we? Yeah. Let's fold that back up. I didn't have to unfold that, but... Why not? Get the pigs in. We'll get the cows. We'll get the cows in. Try and decide what to do for cows. I might just go to Holstein's. We'll get these back over and put in. I don't know why the <laughs> just kind of people. I'm going to get absolutely hammered in the comments, aren't I? I don't know why putting the bales into that feed mixer has blown my mind. So I mean, normally I would use a bale spike. Or I would use pallet forks, not normally, I mean bale spikes. And, and generally it's always been you get the bale over the lip of the thing, pull the pallet spikes out and the bale drops in. It's much harder when you're using bale spikes 
to hold a bale over it so it will gradually unload. Normally you just drop them straight in. That's why I haven't ever really done it. That is... <laughs> That's revolutionised total mix ration for me. <laughs> With all the various different mixers and barns and buildings and all the various different fermenting buildings and stuff that will do it all now. Again, we kind of get into that habit of, you know, it's much easier to put a building in, stick all the requis uh, requisite products in and let it just chug away making total mix ration for you. That's why I wanted to go back to, I wanted, I've got all those bales there, let's make it with bales, and that's... <laughs> oh dear. 50 cows as well, I suppose. Got enough bales to keep me going for quite a while, actually. So those points out of the edges... Uh, pigs... open no not that one that opens up to that so I'll open this end open that end um, just for ease of access what we'll do I'm sure it's this end for unloading this door here and then the pig food There we go. I don't think this door opens though. No. I'm trying to remember what way around this goes. Can raise it and lower it I think. I raised it. Oh there we go. Again if we want to go for full you know. So let's get our 50 in. Oh it holds 300. That's pretty cool. So we've got plenty of room for expansion. Pigs are in. Let's hold that back up. Back for cows. Then once I've done that, we'll then go and see how much pig food we've got. And whatever pig food we've got, we'll put in. I'll need to check the bedding situation now, because... Oh, that's alright, that wasn't too far off full. Excellent. Now it's a proper farm. I know that's a ridiculous statement to make. There are plenty of just arable farms out there. And there are plenty of arable farms that just do one or two crops. The same thing year in, year out. It doesn't have to be... Again, it's that it's that childlike... You know, I always said that when I worked at the school. And you ask a child to draw a house. And when I was teaching art, you know, it would be like, you know, teaching children to draw what they see, not what they imagine. And it's, it's a hard thing to do because you grow up with this kind of idealised view of what you think things will be. You ask a child to draw a house, door in the middle, window either side, windows at the top, chimney, garden path, that kind of thing. It's generally speaking. So I'd always do a lesson, you know, draw your house, draw the house you live in. And the amount of children that would do that, door in the middle, and I'd say, is that the house you live in? No. So well, what does your house look like? And it was that thing of, you know, draw, I know that's not from their imagination, but that's from their memory. I want you to draw what what you know, what you live in, not what you think a house should look like. What you know, and it's that thing, that that thing of a farm. When you're a kid growing up, a farm has animals on it. I mean, generally speaking, when you grow up and you read books or you have stories read to you, in your head, a farm is animals. It's not arable crops. You don't, as a kid, you don't think about farms growing crops. It's generally speaking, unless you've grown up on a farm, of course. It's all it's all animals, isn't it? That's kind of how your brain works. I don't know. Maybe I'm oversimplifying things. I'll see you over there in a minute, once we've got our coos. The moo side of on Oink and Moo. I mean, to be fair, that could all change if we did chickens and stuff as well. And we have got sheep as well, so... But we haven't got a make feed for them. That's just hay or uh, grass. 
This only does 32 or 34 I just put in. I'm pretty sure the delivery point. Now, I can't remember if it's down there. Okay, that opens. That doesn't, okay. I'm hedging my bets on here then. Should we have gone the other way? It was fine the way it was. Okay, 32. I went for Brown Swiss. So we can check here then. Oh yeah, they're going to need a load more straw. And a load more feed. Which I've got plenty of, so I can we can do a load of that. But, they've got some straw, they've got some feed. They don't need water, they don't need water, they don't need water. We're good to go. So... Yeah, I need to load more total mixed ration and go and get some more cows. That was 32. So, another 18. If I'm going to hit 50, yeah. Another 18. I'll go back and get those. Again, I'm going to go back and get those just simply because it gives a little bit more time for pig food to produce while I'm doing it. So I'll go and get those, put those in, and then we'll go and see what pig food we got. We'll get the pig food in. And then I've got loads of total mix ration to make to get them going. Oh, it's nice seeing animals in there as we drive around. It doesn't the, the, the actual farm area doesn't feel not sterile, but you know what I mean. It was, you know, I was changing it all and things were moving and it was feeling more mine. You know, you know what I mean. But had, adding the animals in just adds that bit of life to it. You know. Okay, 18 in. So we've got 50 of each. Now we see how much we've got. Oh, it is here. Yes! Oh, that's not bad. How long has that been running for? Not very long at all. 3,805 metres. That's enough to give them something. And then while that can continues to chug away, I can always come back and grab some more. I'll just park these trailers underneath. Let's get some feeding for the pigs. We are good to go. Tip side left, tip side right, I can't remember. First trailer. Okay, that didn't come up, so... That's the water trough, isn't it? My money's on. Okay, that's a problem. Oh, it's out the... Oh, buffoon. That's for blowing straw. If you want to blow straw, you come into here. I opened, I opened the pit, didn't I? I was thinking of the cows. Are we, are we on the right side? Let's get that little bit in. Check on here. I've got a tiny bit. But it's enough to get us going. They've got some feed, so I don't have to worry for a little bit. Let's go and park this back up on the other side. Right! So after the initial Tomix ration problem, we've got that sorted. We've got our pigs in. Just hop the fence and have a look. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. They all seem very happy. I didn't even think to check the cows actually. Let's go and check on the cows. And then I'm going to grab my tractor, grab that plough, and head out to whatever field I'm, whatever field I'm supposed to be plowing. I didn't even look, I just took the contract on. I'll get this all round. Like I said, I'll do some time of off camera. 
because that, that needs a load more it loads needs a load more bedding in as well but now we're using the buildings which is why I left them so I couldn't find the light switch in here I tried around all the different walls there's definitely lighting I know it's no surprise for me not to be able to find the light switch but these end doors left open so they can come and go They have got a bit of grass, because I was, initially when I came out, I thought, well, that's not, they haven't got a lot of room, have they? But there's a bit of grass around here, they can come out and graze. Water trough here as well. There we go. The farm's getting back to what it was. I'll leave that open, so if I need to bring more feed in, I can. Let's check on what field I'm doing that on. I've gone past it. Of course I have, that way. Field 32. That's the one that had the soybean in, I think. Oh no. One around there. Cool, okay. 10.55 in the morning. It's taking us a bit of time to get all that done. Mixer. Yeah, that's chugging away. Doing its thing. If I run out of any particular ingredient, it might mean switching one off and leaving one running, but for the time being, that'll run enough to keep them fed for a while. Whether that's enough to keep them fed around until next year, it's one of those things because there's other contracts available. If you run out of feed on any of them, if you want to make your own pig food that's absolutely fine but if you get to that point like any farm would if you were running low or for any particular reason you had an issue if I took on a bailing contract and said to myself right every penny from that bailing contract I'm going to buy pig food with that's fine go out and do some contract work buy some pig food you can just buy pallets or bags or whatever you want to do so you know you don't have to run it or you can just straight off the bat say you know what I'm going to go to buy anything silo I'm going to fill up a trailer with pig food and I'm just going to do that again that's absolutely fine. I've lost my fence. Where did I put my fence? Right. Field 32. Is this one just here? I think this is the first ploughing contract I've had on here. I've had, I've had plenty of cultivating ones. I've had a couple of weeding ones pop up. I don't think I've had ploughing. Let's keep going. I am now thinking, because I, I was kind of at a point now thinking I've, I've probably got one more episode. Kind of wrap up and do a few bits. I haven't bought extra farms in so much as because we've got pigs and stuff there and I put sheep on there. There is a farm just south of here. Is it a chicken farm? So I'm sure it's another pig farm that's here. Is it pigs here or is this sheep? This is pigs here, isn't it? Um, straight down so. I don't know how I don't think I've got enough money to buy the chicken farm I'm sure it's the one just south of here and it's, it's I think it's quite expensive it's got some big chicken barns in and we've got barley we've got wheat so I could if I wanted to and there's other products in my potato thing that one of them requires starch and I'm sure eggs was it pancakes it was a potato pancake thing I think um, but anyway, yeah, so there's a, there's more stuff probably I could do, but I'm almost at a point, I think, I could continue on. You know, the pigs will reproduce, they'll produce manure and slurry and that kind of stuff. The cows will produce milk and I could go down a whole route of trying different things out on there. 
I just wanted to get the farm back to a kind of, you know, a pre my arrival, you know, that, that I wanted to get it up and running. So that when I do move on, which inevitably you do, whenever, wherever you are, whatever farm you're on, as I keep saying, you leave it in a better state than you found it. So whoever takes it on then, they've got a running farm. You've done your job. And bearing in mind, we started half a million in debt. We were 500 grand in debt with some small machinery. And we have, you know, I, I could have, that was my goal. I was brought in, get the farm out of debt and, and you know, get it up and running. By the time we were out of debt, we'd already bought some more harvesters. We were up and running. But now we've got animals, I think it's more of a rounded, complete farm as well, I think. I don't know. Anyway, that's it for this episode. Our feed production is underway. We've got the pig food mixer going. That's I've been saying that since the first few episodes of that. With that big building having the built-in feed mixer, at some point I want to do pigs, but I needed all the crop types to be able to do that. And because of the way the game plays now, and because of the time it's taken me to buy fields, and then run through each harvest cycle, and each harvest cycle picking up other contracts for other farmers and getting a little bit of crop left each time, it's taken me four years, four in-game years, to get to a point where I've had all the crops available to buy them. Again, I could have gone to a silo and just bought the crops. But where's the fun in that? That's the whole point, isn't it? So, I'll see you on the next one. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you're still enjoying it. If you are, and if you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, again, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.